Hello, uh, I'm demonstrating how to do your tests in labs on Seneca computers in uh, my classes. And this is only for uh, Fardat's classes, so um, if you are watching this video and you are not one of Fardat's students, then uh, completely ignore this video. Uh, to do the tests in in the lab you need two applications one is Microsoft Edge and the other one is Notepad++ now uh, apart from these two applications anything that you have on the lab computers will be closed so this is how the test is going to happen when you get to the computer the very first thing you do you open Seneca My Apps log into it and search for notepad and notepad plus plus will come up launch it that will bring up notepad plus plus okay i'll execute it and it comes up anyways notepad plus plus will run let's run it one more time there we go okay then you have to close this window the reason is that when you are on Seneca computers this opens the my apps opens uh, my apps opens Firefox and because of that fact you need to close it and go back to edge so you have the notepad plus plus over there if you see there is any update or anything always say no then uh, bring your notepad plus plus you see a tab is coming out come over here and put it at right hand side so it stays uh, in a smaller place at, at left at right then open microsoft edge and log in to my seneca in uh, blackboard learn so it's at learn at seneca polytechnic.ca click on login and log into your subject after you log in select courses and select the subject that you want to do the test on now for here as for example I put it in uh, NAAL so I'm going to open that one I'm going to go to the student preview so what you will see will be something like this before you be able to do any test including demo test the content is not available you should agree to the midterm assessment details and policy you can do this as, at home you can do it as soon as this announcement comes up it is available for you to try it three times so for three times you can try and do this uh, so click on midterm um, uh, assessment details policy and so on and so forth start the attempt and after starting the attempt read this carefully and see exactly what it's telling you watch the video which is essentially this one so if you click on coding style or YouTube or this video these three links opens the video that you're watching right now uh, then watch the video and understand how everything works read the notes over here that tells you what type of mistakes will cost the entire mark for you it's very important to read that read the integrity statement and if you agree click on a if you click on a all the tests in this subject will be open to you and you can actually do them if you click on B it means you want to drop the subject and you don't you either drop the subject or if you continue you're gonna fail it because none of the tests will be available this is essentially tells anyways read the uh, integrity uh, agreement and see what it is and click over there and click on submit that will opens up all the tests to you so now I can actually go to the midterm test again now I'm going to open demo so this demo test actually demonstrates how the test is done and please go to the lab on one of the computers in the lab and practice this in test I'm not going to help you doing this unless there's a technical difficulty um, if you don't know what to do in a test you won't be able to do the test and it's going to cost you the midterm test so please go through this this is extremely important anyways click on demo test or any test that you're supposed to do and start your attempt and then the question for the test is going to come up and it's going to tell you exactly uh, what is supposed to be done 
now um, in here it says pass through attempts I'm gonna make it unlimited so you have uh, no problem submitting it as much as it, as many times as you want to test this read the question properly so in here I'm saying having the following class and assuming all the prototype methods and constructors and destructors work properly read that it means you do not need to implement any of these all these methods and functions and constructors and destructors that are implemented you do not need to do anything about it using these then we're gonna say your task is to write the necessary operator overloads to make the following code exemption possible Ex code execution possible when you want to start coding bring this at left side and put it side by side with your you can actually bring it up over here like this and put it at left side to make sure that you have both windows because uh, on the uh, on your desktop don't go back and forth because clicking to bring things on focus may th take you off track an important note that I forgot to mention as soon as you open notepad plus plus immediately uh, save the file with an extension of CPP. This will give you the IntelliSense and help with syntax and indentation and everything with the C++ code. So immediately go to file. I'm going to go save as over here and let's call it prg.c and it creates a blank, oh sorry, CPP, my apologies. prg.cpp and saves it on this on, on lab computers put it on a desktop so save this list on a desktop and I'll and I'll explain later on why so as soon as you want to start coding you will see okay so this is what I want to do and uh, we we'll look at here I'll see I have three um, let me make it a little bigger I see I have uh, three objects of type student over here and students name is dynamic student number is such and such uh, I can I can have a constructor to create a uh, nameless uh, 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 an object over here with name and size and everything's gonna be done properly because it tells me that all these working properly set is gonna set it properly for the name and it's gonna set the student number properly so these functions are in hand now I need to make this operator overloads possible so the very first thing that I see a is set to B that means uh, copy assignment so what I'm gonna do because it says at the end and I read it to the end uh, assume all needed header files are included and all the code is written in one CPP file I do not need to have show that I'm writing in different ones I literally go over here and copy the code that they gave me and paste it over here so now I have the code in here in hand I can actually start coding and as you see it says your code goes over here so I'm just gonna take advantage of that and write the code right over there so <clears throat> the first one says copy assignment so I'm I know what is the copy assignment so I'll go student and I complete the code so I complete the code by uh, writing the operator equal so um, I do a self uh, checking we know all that so I'm gonna say if this is not equal to the uh, address of the right hand side operand now in here I need to think what I'm what I'm I have to uh, uh, set the current object to whatever it is because I know uh, name is dynamic uh, do I need to think about anything let me take a look I have a set function that works so I don't need to worry about dynamic memory allocation or anything because it says everything is working perfectly all I need to do is to say set uh, right hand side dot m name that's it and then say set right hand side dot uh, m student number and it's done I do not need to do anything else because it's telling me the functions are written so the program is done as soon as I do this to make sure that if the time's up I'm not I, I, uh, I have something to submit I I'm going to copy this into the answer so this is how it happens and pay attention to this I click on the 
place that I have to put my answer, I click on three dots and I select code snippet. It is extremely important to activate the code snippet. It draws a small box inside the text box. You copy everything, control C, and then you paste it over here, control V. Everything gets pasted over here and then you go back over here and continue. So you keep doing that. Now I'm going to do the next one. So the first one was copy assignment and now it's assigning uh, the, uh, it's, it is the assignment for uh, only the, uh, the name, which means at left side I have uh, a, a student and at right side I have a constant character pointer. So the assignment operator I have to set will be student reference and operator operator and as you see you can actually select the operator stuff that it has so I'm gonna say operate operator equal and in here constant character pointer right hand side the right hand operator operand and immediately say return this and at the end, um, because the code is already written, I, all, I, I will simply go set uh, right hand operator. And done. So that's setting for the, uh, for the, for the assignment. The other one is doing a set for the, for the student number. I'm just going to copy this and paste it in here instead of constant character pointer I'll put size T and the rest is the same because I have a set that gets a size T so that is done I could have actually put this one over here like this that would have been easier eh, same thing so these two are done now again because I have I haven't finished yet this is this this question is down to this point I'm gonna copy everything again again control a then you click in the place you are writing the answer do control a again and it copies everything and then control V oh sorry I didn't copy copy one more time no problem control a and control V there you go everything is copied and I can continue with the rest the next one over here says I need to be able to print a inside uh, print a uh, uh, in a student so as soon as I see this uh, I need to uh, I I need to write uh, uh, an operator uh, to print this out and uh, we know what it is. I simply uh, uh, create first uh, uh, a function over here that does the print for me because we don't want to use friends. If you use friend because it's in a code, I don't mind, but don't do it. Uh, do it properly. So uh, in here I'm going to say O stream and I do not need to say STD O stream because it says assume all the header files are there. So I'm going to say O stream reference print and in here I'm going to have OStream reference OSTR set to C out and in this uh, print of mine I will return the OSTR and uh, and I'm going to uh, print it so when I see it says a hold so it actually shows the student number and a dash and when C is empty it says holds nothing so I need to check to see if it's empty or not I'm gonna say over here if M name exists it means everything is set then I'll go over here OSDR uh, M name and a dash and the M student number and I'm done so that's the print and immediately after the print I'll do the op operator overload for the um, for the helper function so that is O stream reference operator uh, 
in OStream reference OSTR and at right side I have constant uh, student reference and reference s and in here I'm going to say return s dot print and I'm going to put OSDR over here to print it and I'm going to close the bracket and I'm done obviously if you submit this one you're gonna lose a little bit of mark because here the student is constant but you forgot to put the constant over here so that will reduce a little bit of mark but tiny bit anyways in here I'm gonna add the const to make sure everything's good so it looks good I'm gonna call control a it copy control a control C to copy then I'm gonna come to the place I answered Control A again and Control V. I paste everything back there and that's that. I missed two things over here which is uh, casting because in here it's telling me that uh, uh, Lisa Simpson's student number is 1234 so when it's casted uh, to a constant character pointer the name is returned when it's casted to a size T the student number is returned. I have to do those things let's say I'm not doing it and it's a complete thing uh, so this is uh, you do it for your demos uh, and then after this is done and everything looks okay I, th I feel everything's okay I click on submit and it's going to submit the uh, code for me L take a look at the take a look at the submission and if you look at the submission you will see that the code you have submitted your answer is very nicely organized and everything is good so you submit something like this you will get full mark um, and if the code is correct so you know, I will you will get code for a uh, mark for every code that you are giving to me now what type of a code doesn't get uh, uh, any mark if you submit your code like this so I'm gonna go back in here and I'm gonna do the demo again if you submit your code like this so let's start attempt 5 say I copy this copy or I have it in the in here so I'm gonna bring it back at left side over here again so let's say I have something like this If you submit something like this, this will not be marked. I'm not going to mark it. It has to be indented so I understand what it is. Even worse, if you submit without the code snippet, no matter how good it is, again, I will not mark it. It has to be submitted in code snippet and indented properly because you have the tools to do so now if for any reason your computer hangs or anything make sure that you save every single question that you have in a separate file on a desktop so as soon as you're finished with this do file save as and just put it on a desktop so it's easily accessible so click on desktop and put over here say q1.cpp question one and save it or put the question number over there what happens is that if you do not for some reason cannot submit the code and the code goes bad or something happens or it hangs anything like that you can simply uh, tell me and I'm gonna open up your computer because your computer is locked you cannot email it to me I'm gonna open up your computer so you can email to answer answer to me and you're not gonna lose any mark so this is how it is done and I'll see you in the lab and we're gonna do this all together as practice this week and next week you are gonna do the midterm test have yourself a beautiful day